devil will leave you and the devil will forsake you. But my Jesus will never leave you and will never forsake you. Amen. And I go for you say, oh fast means. Hold on. There's one God worth serving. It's my Jesus. Did he come from? The gospel of Jesus Christ van die wet. Okay. Vandaag kom ons, en ons is nie meer onder die wet nie, alwel, ek is baie lief vir die wet. Because the law makes me understand what the Father likes and dislikes. Okay. But the grace of God is what actually saves us. And if we, if we look at, 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 at the, the attitude, if I look at, back at my, my way that I brought up my children, so my kinders groot maak. Um, my kinders weerd goed aangevangen. Rarig weerd goed. Ek weet, dan steel hulle die gande, dan geskiet hulle een dasie. Dan is hulle elf. Of, man, weet, dan kry ek hulle beet, en dan preek ek vir hulle. Maar dat het nie noodwendig pak gekry. Maar wat my kinders pak gekry het, was het kom by gesintheid. If my children had the wrong attitude towards their mother, towards myself, or friends, or teachers, that's where the hidings went. Naughtiness, I could have sort of dealt with, and I could reprimand them, but the biggest hidings was because of attitude. Now the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about the attitude that we have towards people that God loves. Okay, that Jesus loves. Now, last Sunday, I'm just recapping on last Sunday, God gave Lucifer, the name Lucifer, as the angel of angels, okay? Then Lucifer went into rebellion. Then God gave him a new name. He called him Satan. Now, Satan, the meaning of the word Satan means he who rebels against God, okay? Now, if I speak of Buddhism, and I say to you, the children, they are children of God, that are sitting here today that are practicing Buddhism, you'll say, never. Uh -uh. Okay. Now, on, on our Mighty Men group, or Mountain Men group, someone posted a, a nice video there of how good and the, embrace the peace and embrace the joy and how wonderful this and how wonderful that. And at the end of it, you see this person sitting on a, on a mountain meditating. People are ignorant to the fact that children of God are practicing Buddhism. And I put a thing on the group, I said, listen carefully to this whole beautiful message, it's very beautiful. But there's absolutely nothing about Jesus in this me message, and it ends with the answer to peace, is meditation. Okay? I spoke to two Christian girls, um, we were training horses in the, in the Winterberg, or, or Cathcart area. And these two Christian girls, twins, beautiful girls, lovely, spontaneous, the, the dad is a radical Christian, but they are vegans now. Now the Indian word for vegan is bad hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the other word for vegan is, you fool. I'm <laughs> 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 now, a vegan is somebody that eats no animal products, not even milk, or anything like that. And I asked these two, two Christian girls, now explain to me. Yeah, it's a weird iPhone. It's a weird Too much 
Steffi. Je gezondheid is recht hoor. Wat is jy voor die op silent die jy het een goeie gezondheid? Ek kan ons een tiener krijg wat hy help van. Dit is nou 50 rand moet in he. Goed maar Steffi. Ons daai nog lief. Ek bou nie klip wat nou die dag of so jare wat terug toe ek die skriflezing gebed in die saal by die school en terwijl ek diep in gebed is begin my phone leid. Dit is dan my embarrassing. But come back to these two girls that come from a Christian home and suddenly they decided they are vegan. And I asked them, how did this happen? No, they went to a Christian spa. And at this Christian spa, they had to talk with this lady and explain to them that, you know, the Daniel fast, where they only ate certain foods and all the good stuff he left out. And Daniel became healthier than anybody else in the area. I said, mm-hmm. And so that's a sign that we must become vegan. I said, no, 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 no. When you fast, you fast for a period of time to seek the Lord on a certain aspect in your life or in the society or for some reason. So Daniel fasted for 21 days to seek the Lord. It had absolutely nothing to do with his health. Okay? Jy nou gesê dat die vrou ons begin een oorgewig geraak, en wil ons kielik vast. Nee, vast is nie om gewig te verloor. Dit wat vir oefening en diet is, ok. Vast is as jy die aangezicht van God soek vir een specifieke rede. En ons mans ook maar jong. Die eerste dag weet ek nie wie kan wie meest op die skaal is die mans of die vrou is. Maar ja, goed. But, when you become a vegan, you are saying that you are practicing Buddhism. Why do vegans not eat meat? Weet een van julle. Vegans believe in reincarnation. Buddhism believes in reincarnation. So when a person dies, it might turn into a cow the next, next world and you might be eating your great-grandmother. <laughs> really? Or a chicken. <laughs> and every time somebody dies, you get kind of upgraded to something else. Okay, so that's the root of veganism. So when you become a vegan, you are practicing Buddhism. Okay, you say God does not know what he said in Genesis when he said the fruit of this earth will not have the power that it has and that you have to eat meat. Okay, and then he brought the law of the kosher meat and the non-kosher meat and then later he said, man, it's not that it goes into the mouth, it makes you unclean what comes out. And if you can believe, and I believe living a healthy life is good, for you, but your life and death lies in God's hands. Okay? Your health lies in God. And if God gives you wisdom on your diet, do that. It must become a religion. So, then we can carry on with all sorts of anisms. Now the question is, Satanism in the church, among Christians. Now, those who were here last Sunday, they understand where I'm coming from. But it's very easy to practice Satanism in the church. Now the word Satan means he who rebels against God. So if you as a child of God is busy rebelling against God, in any way of your life, you are practicing Satanism as a child of God. It doesn't make you a Satanist. Maak you niet Satanist. Maar jy is op gevaarlijke grond. You are on dangerous ground. Okay? So if you rebel against God, Satan means rebelling against God. Satanism is rebelling against what God is trying to tell you in your life. Okay? And we need to understand this. So your little attitude towards your husband or your wife and your unforgiveness towards your brother or sister or a bit of racism here or a bit of classism there or pride there or bitterness there, you are actually entertaining Satanism in your life. Okay? Now that sort of challenges us a little bit. Okay. Now when God revealed this to me, I realized, shorty boy, you better get your act right. You know, I have to remove the beam out of my own eye so I can help the congregation to deal with the splinter in their eye. So no one is righteous. 
You understand that? <coughs> and because of that, we need Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. And we have to move to a point where we get to a point of sanctification that we get all these... What's it, Grievels in Engels? Um, we praat van die Grievels. Man, <laughs> the ugly stuff out of my life. Okay. Lord, help me, man. <laughs> okay, now that brings me this morning to Matthew 18, verse 19. Wie sê ek vir julle? As twee van julle saamstem op aarde oor enige saak, wat, wat hulle mag vraag, dit sal hulle ten deel val van my vader wat in die jubbel is. Want wat twee of drie in my naam vergader, daar is ek in hulle midde. Now in English, it says, and again I say to you, that, that, that if two of you shall agree on earth regarding anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather together in my name, uh, there I am in their midst. Now, I've got agreement as a head, and I also said, um, why are you good friends with somebody? Why do you and somebody get along well? It's because there's some kind of agreement. like-mindedness, and we fill mekaar aan. And I think good friends stem meeste van die tyd saam, maar daar kom ook een tyd, wat jy nie moet sa hoef, hoef saam te stem nie. Maar hoe meer een mens saam stem, hoe vinniger gaan jy voor en toe. If you have a business partner, and you are in agreement with your business partner, you will go up. But if you and your business partner can't agree on any decisions made in the business, you're going nowhere slowly. En ek het kyk, jy dan die laaste kerkraadsvergadering, wie was allemaal daar geweest? Ja, ek hou nie van gaderings nie, want it's a, it's a place for people to disagree. Huh? Have you gone to all these meetings? People with hang-ups, and they've got social issues and psychological issues, and they just want to feel they mean something for this society, and they come with the most stupid, unsensible suggestions, and it confuses the whole church board meeting. And if you can't come into agreement, the church can't go anywhere. And if you go to a business meeting and the people agree, yeah, five minutes later, meeting's over, we know where we're going. But if people cannot agree with each other, you're going nowhere slowly. Now, the Bible says, where two or more people can agree, you see, where two or three gather, I am there. And this morning I want to say, let's start agreeing with Jesus. Understand? My wife and myself are in agreement with a lot of things. And sometimes we disagree, but we have agreed that we love each other in spite of the fact that we might disagree about things. And I, I might disagree and she'll bring insight into the situation and she changes my mind and I come to an agreement. There was a stage where I was working, helping on a big dairy farm, and the guys there are lacquer oaks, man. Christian oaks and echo oaks. But because of the different personalities, the one in certain ways his standard is very high, and another one in other ways his standard is high, but it's a bit of a bit lopsided. And I could see things weren't happening. And they said to me, one said to me, Sean, this and this is bothering me. I said, man, what you sometimes need to do for the sake of going forward, just agree. You know, Red or white, doesn't matter. If red might be warmer than white, and white could be more brighter than red, it doesn't really matter. If it's really got to do with sin, you disagree with sin. Okay, end of the story. But what we're driving with, what car are we going to buy, are we really going to have a big fight with this to be a land cruiser or a land cruiser? I mean, there's not much of a choice there. Okay, well, it depends on the, on the budget. So if you just come, sometimes you have to change your own opinion a little bit to agree so you can get something. Now, I've realized my own opinion when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ is dangerous. My opinion mark me so. Keith Mathieu, a good friend of mine, a lay preacher, I don't know if you know Keith Mathieu, uh, he's a lay preacher.
church at the Anglican Church. And, and he, he said to me now, and, and he's, he's quite a strong character and a very uh, well-spoken advocate, and, you know, and, and he said, uh, very confident man, he said he, when he t studied theology and he had to do the sermon which he gets evaluated, and he read the word and he said, my opinion is this, that and the other, he says that the guy in charge of the sermon there or, or evaluating called him in afterwards, he said, the people don't come to church to hear your opinion. They come to church to hear what God has to say. As you will hear, you know, I'm going to break it, and I'm going to give my opinion. I'm going to break it. Or I'm going to break it, or I'm going to break it, or I'm going to break it, or I'm going to break it. But when it comes to the word of God, my opinion does not count. And we need to get to a point where we agree with the word of God. Then, first of all, let's have a look. I went to that, that, that word in, in the context, what it means in, in the Greek, okay? To agree. And it had a, a bit of a different thing to it. And we, we're missing out on something here. It says when people agree, this kind of agree in Greek, okay? Uh, it's uh, 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 symphonize or harmonize. It refers to music. It is a metaphor taken from, an, from a number of musical instruments set to the same key and playing the same tune without the strings breaking. <laughs> okay? So it is, if it says agree, when people agree, it flows, it's, it's nice, and we, we carry on. Uh, it's a metaphor taken from a number of musical instruments set to the same key and playing the same tune. Here it means a perfect agreement of the heart's desires, wishes, and choices of two or more persons praying to God. Doesn't that add a little bit of spice to agreeing? Eh? It's harmony. Ons vloei, samen ons vloei. Hier, ons allemaal kom hier, so ons bid, Heere Jezus, vir die geneesing van Sari. Die so, allemaal bid nou hard, die so, Heere, ek soek een land erover. Die erf sink, man. Heere, ek soek een inkie. We're busy praying for the salvation of souls, and somebody wants to buy a new house. You're out of sync. That is this agreement. You are not flowing with what God's Spirit is flowing with the church. And because of that out of syncness, you break the momentum of the church, you break the momentum of your family, you break the momentum of your friendship, you break the momentum of your workplace. You need to be in sync in Christ. Okay? Okay. It says here, it means a perfect agreement of hearts, desires, wishes, and voices of two or more people praying to God. It also uh, intimates that as a number of musicians, a musician, a number of musical instruments, skillfully played in a good, correct, good, good and correct, are pleasing to the ears of men. So a number of persons united together in warm earnest, uh, a cordial, uh, in warm earnest, cordial player is highly pleased in the sight and ears of the Lord. Now. This conjoint prayer refers to, in probability, to the binding and loosening in the preaching, in the preaching uh, preceding verse, and thus we see that the power, uh, the power that power, faithful prayers, uh, that, see what power, faithful prayer has with God. Is it So, so when we are in agreement, it's like music flowing. And the maestro is the Holy Spirit, and he makes joyful music, and it's important to pray and pray right. Okay, now, the question is today, if we are not in agreement with Jesus or the Word of God, can I say that we are practicing Satanism? Because if you're in disagreement of God, that means you are rebelling with God, and you are practicing Satanism. You are not a Satanist, but you are busy with satanic way of thinking. 
Er kan wel vlees. Kijk, Satan is maar vlees wat hij zelf. Vlees is. The, the flesh loves the devil. Oké. Okay. So, it's, now that puts a little bit more of a challenge upon ourselves. How we apply our minds when it comes to the word of, of God. Um, I listened to Louis Giglio, one of his big conferences, and he spoke about the false Christs. And he, who of you got this daily bread? It's like a bread loaf and every day you pull out a little card. The, 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 the he, and he said an interesting thing. You're not a Satanist if you've got that. He says, but the problem is, the daily bread is a Jesus that's cut out about everything that, that re revolves around you. So as act for me a Christus, have you heard somebody say, my Jesus understands me? Have you heard somebody say that? My Jesus won't put somebody in hell. My Jesus won't do that. My Jesus, those my Jesuses is a false Christ that you took out and you carved it out of this word of God and the rest you threw away. What did they say to the guy with the David statue? He says you carve away everything that doesn't look like David and the rest stays. So what you do is with the Bible you carve out everything that does not look like the true Jesus and you carve out the Jesus that must look the way you want it. So I don't agree with this scripture, I don't agree with this scripture, I don't agree with this scripture. You see how close this is boundaries on Satanism. And we need to agree that this is the word of God. It is not words of God, which the fathers say. The, the, the theologians now say, the Bible, uh, we must look at it differently. It's words about God. This is not words about God, man. Brother and sister, this is the true word of God. And if we want to agree with the word of God, we need to agree with the word of God. And when I and God are in agreement with something, then we're going somewhere. You know, as a Christian, sometimes we're not going so, so fast as we should be. And you're wondering why people are overtaking. Why am I stuck here? Why am I still circling? Why is my house still falling apart? Why is this? It's because there's places in your life you are not in agreement with God. Okay, and first of all, we need to understand that this Bible is the Word of God. Now, firstly, if we look at the, at the Word of God, in Hebrew, Hebrew 4 verse 12, it says, For the Word of God is a living and powerful, it's living and it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even into even to the dividing apart of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of thoughts and the intent of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we uh, with him we have to do. In other words, God says this word of God is a living word. I can remember once I had a, uh, a, a dream, it was a spiritual dream, and I, in this dream I was at war, and I, I was busy fighting, and people shooting, and, and, and behind this one vehicle this guy comes out, and he starts shooting at me, and I could feel the bullets hit me, but somehow they don't hurt me, and they're not killing me. So I said, as long as I'm standing, I'm going to fight back, and I'm shooting, and I'm shooting, and that guy's... I said, I can't, I'm hitting him, but he's not dying. And I lift my gun like this, and I shot once more. And in this dream, the guy fell dead. And that next morning, I was troubled, and I said, Lord, what does this mean? What does this, this mean? Show me what was the dream about. And the Lord took me back to the previous day. I was in argument with somebody over spiritual matters. And it was the words, the fiery darts of the devil, are words that are being shot in your direction. And these words, the things that he was saying, troubled me, but they couldn't kill me. And the, the shots I was firing at him was my opinion about things. Now, your opinion cannot destroy the work of the devil. Then the Lord showed me when you said, it is written, it is written. The bullet hit and killed the enemy in that argument. And that 
I realized I've got insight. The word of God is alive. It is true. And I'm in agreement with God that this is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning and nothing existed that was created that was not created by the word of God. And in the word was the light of this world. Revelation says, he that sits on the white horse, his name is the word of God. And he's got a sword in his mouth. And the sword is as the word of God goes out for the right reasons. You can use the word of God in a satanic way like the devil did. It is written. It is written to create confusion. Or you can use the word of God like Jesus used it under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So, the Word of God, we must agree that the Word of God is a living Word. Dat wat sê in 1 Timothy 2 4 vers 1, hy sê, Ek besweer jylle dan voor God, die Heere Jesus Christus, vir die levende en die dode sal oordeel, by die verscheiding van die Koninkryk. Verkondig die woord, hou aan, tydig en ontydig. Weerle, bestraf, verbaan in alle langmoedigheid en in lering. Nou, I listened to uh, 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 Derek Prince, one of his messages. We live in the verband, let's go to the English crazy. The clunk became erger. I can't even in English. It's rebuke, teach, rebuke, and reprimand. Now, Derek Prince says, Can you imagine how empty the churches would be if the preachers used the word to teach, rebuke, and reprimand? <laughs> you know, uh, 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 I don't want to go to church because every time I go to church, I feel reprimanded or rebuked, taught or whatever. You understand? I don't feel the tickling of the ear. But when I speak of a, a serious situation that you might be practicing Satanism, it kind of doesn't tickle the ear, does it? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about unforgiveness with that guy, and I did it, and now Sean tells me I'm a Satanist. <laughs> no, you're not a Satanist. But it's a Satanist practice not to forgive somebody. You understand? So now, why do I need to teach? Why do I need to reprimand? Why do I need to rebuke? Because God's Holy Spirit is working with you through His Word to make you a mighty warrior in His kingdom. Amen. End of the story. When I went to the army, they called us civvies. I was a civvy gaat uit my... Excuse me, forget word. A civvy gaat uit my uit kry. That's the first thing the army had to do. Get away with the civvy way of thinking. Get away of the carnal way of thinking. And the army didn't do it by speaking nicely to you. That's done. And the harder the army was, the better. And the more disciplined they were, the better soldiers. Okay. And I believe God has called upon me as a pastor of this church to rise up an army in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit that will make a difference, that will be a threat to the enemy Amen. that we have to go. So that's why sometimes I put a little bit more pressure than most other sermons might fall upon your ears. But to get you somewhere, to get you to a place where you'll be safe in the time of battle the devil. I say he saw. I say, the conduct of words are on tide and on tide, in season and out season, we are lay, bestraf and vermont, and all along moedigheid and leering. Now, now he's speaking to Timothy here. He said, be patient, you just carry on. You know, sometimes people don't change immediately. But you just carry on. My Holy Spirit will keep doing the work in their lives. I will, I will reveal through the power of the Holy Spirit. That the word that you preach is my word, and they need to come into agreement with the word of God. But that shall a tight way is for that the gesonde leer nie verdra sal word nie. Maar omdat hulle in die gehoor gestreel wees, hulle vir hulle menigte leraar sal versamel, volgens hulle eie begeerlikhede. En die, en oor, en die oor sal afkeer van die waarheid, en hulle sal wend tot fabels. Maar wie is jy nuchter lijfverdrukking, Doen die werk van die evangelis, vervul jou bediening. So there will be persecution when you speak, bring the 
gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm the pastor of this congregation. Des is the pastor of the tire company. Des is the pastor for the milker. Gary is the pastor for our house. Understand? You are the prophet, priest and king of the environment you are. And some of you guys have got more congregation members than I have as a pastor. And the Lord wants to say to you, just carry on. You stick to your guns. You stick to the word of God. You stick to the truth. There's people that don't like it and they don't like it and they don't like it. But one day that same person that did not like it will come into a crisis and he would know that if he needs the truth, he needs to come to you. And come to you for the advice and counseling because he knows that you stick to your guns. This is the time to come. There are going to be many churches that will bring messages that will tickle your ears. This is lacquer, a nice motivational speech. You know that same message of Louis Giglio, he said there's three types of sermons. He says, one, when you walk out there, you are boosted. You are boosted. Jij is opgeteld. You know, Jesus died for you. He built a house for you, a mansion for you. He killed the devil for you. You are a child. You are everything in this world. When a sermon is all about glorifying people, and people are being exalted in the church. Then, oh, you man, you have to preach a show. Oh, the pastor is going to preach. I owe us an Easter. We have not long to preach. We have not even done that. I have not even shown the day to preach. It's a day. The preacher has been glorified. Or you can come out of church and say, "This Jesus that we serve. This Jesus that we serve." The God of that church is an amazing God. Not the people, not the pastor. The God of that church is an amazing God. And I have to test myself. To ask myself, who am I glorifying? The church? Am I trying to be something? Or is this congregation all about Jesus? Can we glorify Him this morning? And to glorify Him, we must be in agreement with Him. And we must agree that His Word is precious to us. And we have to stand by the Word. You know, there are a lot of controversial things. People speak to me about tattoos. I said, man, I don't know. I've never seen a Satanist without a tattoo. Have you seen a Satanist without a tattoo? Have you gone to a rehab? How often do you go to a rehab and see if you can find a drug addict without a tattoo of a cross nogle? Most Satanists have cross tattoos, crosses tattooed on them. You understand? If you've got a tattoo, okay, so what? The Lord of God forgives you <laughs> at that time of your ignorance. But how easily we, we can get involved and practice things in our ignorance that we shouldn't be practicing. You know, David came along and he said, we had a bit of an argument the other day. I love this argument. You know, I put these kids in the pressure on the farm. So I'm sitting in the lounge and old Josh gets called. And, and Josh, gaan all for the awesome Macy, the apple. <laughs> But the awesome girl doesn't realize I'm, I'm sitting there in the shadows listening to it. For all the awesome Macy apples, so I'll just get, takes the awesome girl, follow my eyes, the apple. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> that evening at supper time, oh, she was the awesome girl. So last night riding on that moon ride, the awesome girl says to Nicholas, what did you say to you think too much of yourself. <laughs> and I said, oh, so the awesome girl thinks Nicholas is thinking too much of himself. And then Nicholas says, but the Bible says you must love your neighbor like you love yourself. If I can't love myself, how can I love you? So, so something is getting through this. <laughs> and, and it reminded me of King David. He says, thank you, Lord, that I am so fearfully and wonderfully Huh? Now, if you're fearfully and wonderfully made, do you really think you need a tattoo? <laughs> so once you get to that point, you realize that all that you think that you did in ignorance was unnecessary. You are beautiful the way you are. If you have a tattoo, you don't have to help you. You see a few people who come to the road. You don't have to help you. Okay? 
better not there. You don't need a tattoo. I, I saw a beautiful girl, a colored girl there in Jeffrey's Bay, uh, sitting behind the till with these tattoos on her hands. And I said to her, my dear, do you know what the Mon Mona Lisa is? Yes, the other one says a painting. I said, it's probably the, one of the most expensive paintings in the world, through Mona Lisa. I think that thing is worth so much money, I don't think my calculator can calculate it. I said, but if I go with a paintbrush now and I go draw pictures on it, does it increase or decrease the value? <laughs> and I said to her, you are much more worth than the Mona Lisa to your creator. Amen. And unless you painted the Mona Lisa, you're not allowed to, to change it. You are worth much more to your creator than any Mona Lisa in money. Okay, he died for you. So keep it that way. Mm. She just needed self-confidence. You understand? That's all she needed. You understand that she's beautiful just the way you are. And don't, most also, the, don't tattoo your boyfriend's name there. <laughs> He's going to have five by the time you get married, and he's going to know who's Peter Kwasi and Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that's just a bit of wisdom. <laughs> so we have to come into agreement with Jesus. We must agree that his word is, is, is a healthy word. Okay, healthy teaching. Then there's a few other little things that we need to understand. The Great Commission, in Mark 16, 14, it says, After this he appeared to the leaven as they reclined. And he, he approached their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into this world, proclaim the gospel to all creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe, will be condemned. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. We need to come into agreement with the word of God. You know, there's te teachings out there that teaches against baptism. It teaches against the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It te teaches against the manifestations of the Spirit of God. Okay. But we need to come to an agreement. I don't know what your teaching says, but this is what the Bible says. Till this day, I have not read the Constitution of the Pentecostal Protestant Church. Because I'm scared that the Constitution of the Pentecostal Protestant Church can make my mind deviate from the truth. Okay, so I stick to the Constitution of God. It says, you believe that the baptized will be saved, and you does not believe will be condemned. People don't believe they will be condemned. Somebody must go to hell. God did not make the hell for nothing. Okay, it's a lot of energy he put into making the hell. Somebody must go there. Okay, so they'll be condemned. The hell has been created for the devil and his followers, which is the demons. But somehow people that don't follow Jesus are saying, I'd rather follow the devil. So the hell is made for people that follow the devil. Okay. He never intended people to go to hell. He intended the demons to go to hell. But if you want to follow the demons, you're going to hell. And we need to come into agreement with this. Okay. And then he says, for those who believe, and miraculous signs will follow to those believing these things. In my name you will cast out demons. You will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And they will drink deadly things. And it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick. And they will be well. You cannot download a healing touch from the Lord on Facebook. You cannot do it. I had a fire here the other day. I said we can pack this fire. We can put the petrol on the fire. You cannot watch up that fire. Adi Brandt. You can't hear fear on the brand what's happening. The fire came with a laying of hands. There's certain things that we have to agree upon. And sometimes we have to put our neck out a little bit. We don't want to run around and be rebellious. The Bible says if there's a snake, if you 
busy with the things of the Lord, and the snake comes in your way, you just take the thing and throw it away. Okay? But I'm not going to run around looking for snakes to show you how spiritual I am. You understand? That's not why God gave me the power. That's not why He gave me the authority to go brag about my spiritualism. How, how, how much faith I have. But when I'm busy with the things of the Lord and the snake comes and the poison comes, I fear not, I deal with it, I carry on with the things of the Lord. Amen. If I want to go stand in the, in the market square with a big mic and say, stuff the government and I'm going to have church and everybody come here. That's not the will of God. Okay? We're not trying to be something. But here today, we're not here for a social gathering. We're here because we need a touch from God. Okay? And because of that, God walked with death. No one here will ever die of Corona. Okay? The real Corona now, not the plane crash and then Corona. <laughs> okay? You will lay hands on the sick and they will be well. If I can agree about this in the name of Jesus, then it's about time that you go to your workplace and start laying hands on the sick people that don't even need to believe because the signs and the wonders are for the unbeliever. Now, I don't believe in your God. I know you don't, but I see you've got cancer. Yeah, let me pray. Let's see what happens. That's what the signs and wonders are for. But we want to pray more for the believers than for the unbeliever. Go pray for the unbelievers. How are they going to believe? They say Buddhism says they're the God. Hinduism says they're the God. Sai Baba says he's the God. Okay, let them pray for you. Nothing happens. I come in the name of Jesus. And the signs and wonders are there for the unbeliever so they can realize that Jesus did not look past them. There's a few little things I just mentioned here. We need to come in agreement that we need saving. We need a, a savior. We need to come into agreement that we need to renew our minds on a daily basis as the Holy Spirit speaks to us and the Word speaks to us. We need to come in agreement with Jesus that we are justified by the blood of the Lamb. You are justified. You're a child of God. You might be playing a little bit with Satanism here, but I think after this morning you will start thinking about it. But you are still a child of God, and if the devil tells you anything else, you say, I am justified by the blood of the Lamb. I've been bought by His blood. I'm a child of God. I am a work in process, but you are not my servant. I will not take the condemnation of the tattoo I put on my leg or bum or wherever 20 years ago. <laughs> Tell me, is it that too? What I give you the dollars back today? What else for? So I'm not condemned anymore. Christus is for me. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. We need to repent and have remorse for our sins. You know, there's teaching today that says God save you yesterday, tomorrow, and the sins to be, you know. No, 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 no. When you have done something wrong, you feel remorse, you need to repent. Set you free. Okay? If my son does something wrong, or my child or a friend of mine does something wrong, it helps me to forgive them when they show remorse. Okay? If they don't show remorse, it feels like they don't think it was wrong. So we need to repent. We need to show remorse. One of the things we need to agree on, and it's a very difficult one, is that we need to love our enemies. Yes. The two or more agree upon the reason your prayers aren't being answered the way they should be is because you're not in agreement with Jesus when it comes to loving your enemies. Because Jesus loves your enemy so much that if he was the last person on this earth and the only person that he would still die for that person, your enemy. Okay. So then we have to forgive them. We need to forgive 70 times, 7 times a day. We need to be in agreement. We need to agree in the gathering of the saints. It's belangrijk that the heiligers by elkaar come. We need to agree that we need to pray more. Not WhatsApp, not Wi-Fi, pray. You know, sometimes I'm praying and I'm thinking about things that are and the Lord catches me out. You know, this whole thing about electricity is it's a nasty business. Does it crack up? Niemand stress over the lady cost gaan gaan. 
Niemand stress omdat die heater die gaan werken die daar komen water. Die mensen stress want dan kan je alles zelf voor naar charge. Ja. Zeg amen. That's the biggest worry about electricity. You cannot communicate with your fake friends and they don't really exist. It's not about cooking food and you can eat TV cake. Now, if you really worried about electricity because you need to cook for your family, then I could understand. But it's all about social media. I mean, yeah. You always stress that if you don't charge the people, they will panic. They will panic. You know what? We need to pray more. That battery cannot go flat. It carries on. We need to agree that we need to bless those who curse us. We need to agree. That Psalm 91 still counts for us today. And we need to agree that in Psalm 91 it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall rest under the shadows of the Almighty. Are you just in church? Or do you really dwell in the secret place of the Most High? You must ask yourselves that question. Of is it not a Seder? Because I can tell you, if you dwell in the secret place of the Almighty, your dwelling is resting place. Yes, when you go to pick and pay, you wear your mask. When you go to people that are full of fear, you don't offend them. But you cannot fear the virus. Okay? You cannot fear the virus. It says here, Verse 5, it says, you shall not fear the terror at night, or, be or because of the arrow that flies by day. The arrow is negative things that have been spoken about the country, the commerce, uh, the days you're going to be bankrupt before the end of the year because of coronavirus. I mean, thank goodness for apartheid and kind of coronavirus. Everything is blamed on them now. Okay. <laughs> Nobody has done anything wrong with apartheid and the coronavirus. Okay. Wonderful. That's why I can't pay my debt. That's why... <laughs> yes, we can just carry on. Those arrows, the negative things that people speak, will have no impact on you. That's an arrow that flies by day. Nor the plague that walks in the darkness of the destruction lying waste in the noonday. Noonday. A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand. It shall not come near you. If you cannot agree upon this, you've got a problem. Then you need to agree that you need faith. And faith to go seek from Jesus. Faith is something that grows. Faith is something that, that starts bubbling in you. The more time you spend in the presence of people that have faith in the presence of Jesus. Now, fear rubs off on people. Have you noticed that? Fear rubs off. You hang around a bunch of fearful people, you see how scared you become. You, you hang around a people of faith, and you see how your faith gets built. Now, I spoke to my sister. She and I, we're kind of on the same frequency. We love the Lord much. We're quite radical. And she says, man, she loves this coronavirus because she goes jogging in the city without a mask. And it's like she's a pit bull, everybody makes way for her. <laughs> <laughs> she said, now since she's been jogging without a mask, more and more people are jogging without the masks. She said, but she phoned my brother. My brother's put his whole house under quarantine. He's, he's gone crazy. He, he's waiting for the apocalypse to come. Because his friendship on people of faith in the world, his faith lies in money. People he surrounds him with are that kind of person, and it's creating fear. Okay? Don't get play with a, with a lion, but if there's a lion, carry on with your life. Okay? The Word of God says, and I'm in agreement, nor the plague that walks in the darkness that fall upon me, my house, or this congregation of the Lord. Okay? He says, thousands will fall. And 10,000 will fall. And that's the sad part. For they who do not believe, they're going to fall. We need to come in agreement that hell actually exists. Teachings in the Bible industry or, or the theologians say hell doesn't really exist. It's a myth. 
We need to come in agreement with Jesus that we are actually part of a heavenly kingdom. And this is not our kingdom. We are just ambassadors in this kingdom. So I don't mind dying. But then I'm going to the heavenly kingdom. We need to agree that we are at war against the kingdom of darkness. And if you aren't fighting, you are a deserter. And if you are living a life of sin, you are a traitor in this army. So if you feel life's good and you're not fighting, you, God says, where are you? Why aren't you in the battle? The battle's on the knees. Okay? And we must also come into agreement that through Christ Jesus, the blood of Jesus, with remorse and repentance, comes total forgiveness. Total forgiveness. And that's a wonderful thing. I've been pardoned by the blood of Jesus Christ. The things I have done yesterday or the day before that might not please the Lord, and that you can criticize before the Lord has shown me, I've had remorse and I've repented before the Lord. And I can stand before the Lord this morning and I can preach with a pure heart to this congregation. And I will not allow the devil to bring back my sins of the past because the, Jesus doesn't even know about them. He says, I forget about them. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to have a friend like you, a real friend, for your word, and for the great powers and blessings and, 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 and just wisdom and, and, and life and answer in a, on a prayer, Lord, for us who agree with you, Lord. I'd rather agree with you than with man, Lord. And we, we as a congregation all agree with you and agree with each other, Lord. I know, Lord, that you can use us for the great miracles that you intended for us to do in this dark world that we live in, Lord. I pray that you make each and every one of us a light in the soul to shine in this world that we are in and to make a difference, Lord. Give us faith so our faith can rub off on those who are living in fear. Give us joy so our joy can rub off on those who are, who are living in depression, Lord. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.